Hey everyone, as you know, once every two years in September, millions of pink salmon will make their way into the Fraser River and uh, you can catch them quite easily simply by casting and retrieving spoons and spinners in the Fraser River, in the tidal portion and also non-tidal portion of the Fraser River. But also, these fish will eventually will make their way into different tributaries such as the, um, such as the Chilliwack River and Harrison River. And uh, the fishing technique uh, changes a little bit because the fish behavior changes once they get into the natal stream. Uh, once they move into a faster flowing stream where there's runs and pools, um, they'll hold in the river. Uh, they become more territorial because they're getting closer to their spawning time. Um, they will attack other fish that are around the areas. Um, they will attack other pink salmon and also they will attack other smaller fish that are waiting to feed on their eggs. Uh, so your fishing technique will it changes a little bit, uh, uh, both because of the fish behavior change and also the type of water where you're fishing. In this How to Fish video, we'll take a look at the basic setup for flow fishing uh, with jigs and other little uh, lures and uh, presentations in the Fraser River tributaries such as the Chilliwack River. So the very first setup we'll look at is this rod right here, this rod and reel. So this is a Shimano Claris um, bait casting rod. It's nine and a half foot long and it's ideal for flow fishing but also for casting lures such as spoons and spinners. Uh, a lot of people, when they flow fish in the river, they tend to go with a slightly longer rod, which is fine. You can use rods that are 10 and a half foot long or 11, 11 uh, foot long. Uh, but personally, I like to use a shorter rod just so I can switch this into a lure casting rod uh, at times. So this fishing rod here is rated between 8 and 12 pound test. Uh, as you know, if you're fishing the Fraser River, you can get away with fishing a fairly light fishing rod, sometimes even an ultra light fishing rod for pink salmon, just because there's not much current in the Fraser River. But once you start fishing in a smaller stream where the, the water is, the river velocity is much faster, um, you want to go with a heavier setup because the fish can actually use the river current as its advantage to uh, when, when you're fighting the fish. Uh, so a slightly heavy setup like this is ideal. Um, and secondly, uh, there are other salmon species present in the river at the same time too. Uh, so not only you catch pink salmon, you also have the possibility of catching cold salmon and Chinook salmon and Chum salmon. So you want to have something that's slightly heavier so you can handle all the species. So this would be a good um, good rod with, with the rating between 8 and 12 pounds uh, to handle that. So the bait casting rod here is fitted with a bait casting reel. So this is a pretty small reel. This is a Shimano Konach, uh low profile bait casting reel. I really like the low profile reel just because my hands is not exactly very, very big. Um, if I have a round reel, it's a lot harder to hold. Whereas a smaller, um, smaller low profile bait casting Real like this is much easier uh, to, to hold. I know you know you probably have any seen use, people using this reel for bass fishing, but it's also great for salmon fishing in the Pacific Northwest. So this reel here is usually usually spooled with 12 pound test or 15 pound test line. Uh, not because you, the the fish might break it off, but you, you know when you the the main line is usually a little thicker, just so that you can handle all the abuse in, you might get in the water. This line might get scratched by rocks. Um, when you slide the float up and down, it might get scratched as well. So we want to have something that's a little thicker so we can actually handle all that abuse. The second float fishing uh, rod and reel setup we'll look at is this one right here. So this is a center pin rod uh, setup. So the reel is a Islander center pin uh, reel. Uh, a lot of people have asked me in previous videos what this reel is. So it's Islander Steel Header. It's a really nice center pin reel. Uh, center pin reels has a free spooling function. So, so free spooling like that. So that allows you to drift your float down the river very smoothly. Uh, it's a really, um, really useful function. And when you have a fish on, you can also put the click on like that when you fight the fish. If you want to show up to your friends. Um, so this reel here 
it's fitted with a sandpaper rod that's this is rated between 8 and 15 pound test so 8 and 12 8 and 15 it's they, they both will work um, again this one is nine nine foot long um, you can again you can use them you know ten and a half eleven foot long uh, if you if you want to go with the longer rod so that's a very that's just a basic um, overview of the rod and reel setup so this one's already set up so it's a little bit noisy here so once you have your line threaded through your guides and all that so the first thing you want to put on is a float like that and once you have your float the float should be fixed onto your line well it can either be fixed or can be a free running float like that um, as long as you have a float stop on the very top and you want to put some weight onto the float uh, onto the main line then tie a swivel onto the main line then at the other end of the swivel you have a leader so at the end of that leader this is where you're going to tie your, your presentation on so for pink salmon uh, you want to use jigs so pink jigs like the these ones so these are locally made um, it's they call bent rods jigs and they're really really good um, so these these marble jigs um, like that so you, when you tie these on so it actually flows down the river like that so so that marble feather will just go you'll, you'll expand and come in again like that and that can really take off a pink salmon if it's holding in the run so the first thing you do when you get this uh, buy a jig like that in a package is to pinch that barb again you're fishing with single barbless hook as required in the freshwater fishing regulation so pinch that barb down and this is tied onto the leader we'll just do a quick tie here so this is a simple um, improved clinch knot is all you need to do for this so so you have your you have your float you have your weight and then you have your jig so when you cast this out this should just float downstream like that um, but you want to make sure that this jig is not dragging onto the bottom it's not dredging on the bottom it's actually floating above all the fish so all the fish are laying right on the bottom and uh, they usually look up and if this jig is floating let's say one or two feet above the riverbed uh, that's where the strike zone is uh, so how do you achieve that so to do that you want to make sure your float depth is right uh, so adjust your float depth so that it's the, the length from the float down to the jig okay should be you know two two feet less than the actual river depth uh, of course you don't know the exact river depth just by looking at it you can kind of judge how deep the water is and then you kind of just trial and error and figure out how deep that should be if this is too deep and this is dredging on the bottom what's going to happen is your float's going to be sinking down like that or it's going to be sitting on the side like that because it's not balanced properly it's going to be dragging on the bottom so the bottom is going to be dragging that float under the water uh, when that happens you gotta uh, shorten that depth so that it's not dragging if it's not dragging if it's free floating what you, you should see is your float uh, sitting up straight and uh, just floating down uh, stream at a very at the constant moving speed uh, without any interference and the second thing you should note is that this jig has some weight to it so you shouldn't put too much weight uh, to balance that float so usually you have quite a bit of weight here to balance the float and just have your wool or bait whatever when, when you're fishing right uh, if you're using the jig this weight should be a little s smaller and the properly properly balanced float if I can show you guys these this should be when this is in the water the water should come up to here okay to where that orange the the edge of that orange part of the float is so anything below the orange is sitting on the water anything above the orange is just popping up from the water surface and when the fish grab that jig 
this thing will go under the water like that and that's when you strike. So you can buy these jigs uh, from any tackle stores in uh, the Vancouver Fraser Valley area. So you can buy them pre-made um, like that or you can buy them by individual jig heads like that and uh, you can buy your own tying material. This is just fly tying material and just tie your own jigs if you want. Or you can buy a pack of rubber uh, jigs like that. So, so the, the, of course the pink color for pinks, um, you can buy a pack of that and that, that just, what you do is just thread that onto the jig head and tie onto the hook, uh, tie onto the, to the leader and that will work just fine. Um, these, like I say, when they come into the river, they're really aggressive and they usually hold in a run by the hundreds and uh, if you're just drifting your float across the run and uh, if, there are, if the pink salmon are in there by the hundreds and you should have no problem catching them. So give it a go. Uh, the pink salmon fishing season in the tributary, uh, tributaries of the Fraser River usually starts around the second week of September, lasting until the end of September. Um, and uh, make sure you have your freshwater fishing license and the salmon stamp if you want to keep some fish to eat for dinner. And uh, hopefully you guys will get into some fish. Until next time, good luck fishing.